They call me the Dagger Bandit. But no one sees that I rob the rich and give to the here in the dark. Evildoers run rampant in the shadows, while the good, honest folk stumble blindly on, just trying to find a way through. As the bandit brooded, suddenly the world was inexplicably changed as a single star appeared on the horizon and flew across the sky. Traveler, stomp on that movement mechanism in front of you. Light. A brief flash, yet enough to illuminate the world. If I can find the source of that light, I can shine it into the darkness, and the people will suffer in blindness no longer. Without a moment to spare, he set off to follow the star's course. All the while, the star kept moving through the sky. Um, Traveler, the star kept moving through the sky. like I have to go through the desert. This could get dangerous. If everything he'd heard was to be believed, the desert ahead was a no-man's land filled with horrors. Worse still, the star had landed in the most difficult to reach location, surrounded by sheer cliffs. But he was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. The Dagger Bandit trekked deep into the desert wasteland. Yet when he finally arrived at his destination, he found not a fallen star, but a young girl. Dressed in... How strange. I'm positive this is where the star landed. Young lady, do you know where the light has gone? The girl replied... Traveler from afar, the light you seek is only a bottled flame. But the flame has now died, and its light is long gone. A uh, bottled flame? Yes, it was a gift from another. And so, the girl began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The girl hailed from a kingdom that sat atop the waterfalls. But when the reigning dynasty fell and a new one seized power, she and her people fled for their lives. A thick fog began to fill the air as she made her way through the forest, and dense thickets tried to block her path. There is a mechanism down there that you can press to retract the thicket board below the stage. to guide me through this wretched forest, then I could survive. With scratches covering her arms and legs, the girl pressed through the pain and made her way forward. The road ahead was arduous, but she was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now.
But just as she was drawing near her destination, a huge stretch of thorns and brambles suddenly came into view. Despair set in and began to weigh on her heart. If only someone could help me, I would give anything in return. The girl's heartfelt wish in her moment of desperation did not go unheard. Wait, wait, wait! There's no mechanism for the final thicket! Ugh, I must have forgotten to check those boards. According to the story, those thickets should be gone from the stage now, right? Yes, total oversight on my part. Ugh, what a pain. Wish did not go unheard for a Jumpy Dump. Oh, thank you, Jumpy Dumpty. And so the girl continued her journey deeper into the forest. But what she found there was not a lamp, but a mage glowing with fire. So, just to clarify, it was supposed to be the mage who helped burn a path through the thicket. <laughs> Save it for the end, man! The mage took pity on the girl and handed her a bottle. Then, the mage began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The fiery mage had an adventurous spirit and enjoyed taking long journeys. On one such journey, while taking rest in an oasis, she found a beautiful bottle by a crescent-shaped lake. Clee, quick! Get in the light. Coming! She was an extraordinary mage with the power to grant people their wishes. She turned the bottle into a thing of equally extraordinary power. But the only place that it could make wishes come true was inside of the bottle. Oh me! Oh my! Look at this wonderful bottle of mine! It could make a fine toy! Better still, a sojourner's home. The fiery mage blew into the bottle, allowing it to grant one single wish outside its glass walls. Oh, am I supposed to blow into it? <sighs> wow, it lit up! A flame was kindled within the bottle, and it began to glow a fiery red, just like the mage herself. After the mage finished telling her story, she disappeared, leaving only the bottle behind. A magic bottle that can grant wishes. And I wish to leave this place and go somewhere where no one will ever find me again. And then, the bottle seemed to softly inquire. I don't know. The flame in the bottle faded as the girl's single wish was granted, and she found herself in the middle of the desert, far away, where no one could ever find her. When the dagger bandit listened to her story, he sighed in disappointment that it may be able to grant you your wit. All I wish for is honoring the bandit's request. The girl wished for light inside the bottle, and sure enough, it lit up. They found that while the light was only generated within, it could nonetheless shine through the glass and reach anywhere in the outside world. Even though it doesn't burn as brilliantly as the light that shone before, this is still an extraordinary light. What will you do after I take the bottle? I don't know. Well, then maybe you should come back with me. With no reason to refuse, the girl accompanied the dagger bandit back to the land where the light did not shine. They brought light to that place. <laughs> 
and the darkness was dispersed, and they lived happily ever after. ever called me that before. Thank you, my dear little mage. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy. Miss Dia said that she tailored it a little bit so it would fit me, but you were the one who designed and made it. You're amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And it sounds like Adia did a great job too. It was nothing really. Just one of those, oh no, whatever shall I wear to the ball moments. Sewing comes in handy at times like that. Sewing is an art in its own right. You're more talented than you give yourself credit for, Adia. Really? Oh, uh, I, I'm just gonna go for a second. Please. Chat amongst yourselves. She gets embarrassed so easily. She really can't handle being in the spotlight. Idea's a sensitive person and doesn't have a whole lot of self-confidence. I hope all the excitement hasn't brought her to tears. Oh, I'm a little worried. Don't worry. I'll go make sure she's okay. I'll see you all later. So, what did you all think of the play? Any thoughts? Huh? Uh-oh. Time to get serious. Now, are you sure you want to hear what we really think? Oh, absolutely! I had the courage to ask, didn't I? So, don't mince your words. Go ahead. Speak your mind. I can take it. Okay, Hi, Mom will go first. So, the dialogue at the beginning was pretty good, but it ran out of steam as the story went on. Hi, Mom could tell that you ran out of inspiration somewhere along the way. The characters were honestly a little bit ridiculous. Paimon didn't get what you were trying to do. The moment anyone started to show any kind of substance, suddenly the scene was over. Yes, all very good points, Paimon. I would add that in its attempt to pay tribute to the series A Thousand Nights, all semblance of a coherent was sacrificed. Plus, I do have to penalize you for the issues with the props. Miss Idea, what are you doing back here? Oh, you know, I return like the tide when people start discussing something important. Huh. 
especially when it has to do with criticizing my show. Mm -hmm. But there was one thing I liked about it. Just one, mind you. The story had a good ending. You think so? I thought I was letting him off lightly. Itia, could I borrow you for a moment? Sure! Excuse me for a moment. Back to you, Paimon. Keep up the good criticism. Let's hear it. Taking criticism on the chin is all part of being a director. The ending was all wrong. The girl's motives were clear and simple the whole way through. It was kind of jarring when all she had to say was, I don't know. And doesn't anyone else find it weird how her whole community was on the run? But she was only looking out for herself the whole time? I'm fine. I'm not going to improve without feedback. I also learned a lot this time with the chance to be off stage. To be honest, it was a dream come true. What a great attitude! You don't seem upset at all by our comments. I wouldn't say I'm completely unaffected, but you're only speaking the truth. They're all very valid points. Still, now that Paimon thinks about it, you did finish the script in a bit of a rush. Hmm. Maybe we are being a little too hard on you. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Nothing is as important to me as my work on the stage. We all use our imaginations when we're kids, right? I used to play with dolls in my own cardboard cutouts by the light of an oil lamp. The shadows would come to life and dance on the walls. I never got tired of it. Fast forward to now, and in many ways, I'm still that same little kid. Lying on his bed, making sound effects. And I get the same joy from running a show now, as I did in my little bedroom theater. Of course, a director can accomplish nothing without a cast and crew. So on that note, I want you to all know that I am eternally grateful to each and every one of you. Hey, don't mention it! We had a blast! <laughs> it's the bottle from the show! The one that lit up when I blew into it! <laughs> That's right! Can you guess the secret behind why it lights up? Um... Oh, maybe there's an invisible fairy inside that opens its eyes when you blow into it! Uh... Bingo! You guessed it! That should do the trick. Oh, wait, this needs tightening up a little. Hold on, this will only take a second. Hmm. This outfit's more fashionable than I imagined. Excuse me, 
everyone. Do you have a moment? Especially you, Zosimos. Itia wants to do a little something for you. <laughs> she says it'll be a dream come true. A dream come true? Yes. She said that as useless as she is, she wants to do something for you as the first person to have heard of your dream of being a director. Her words, not mine. I have to disagree, though. I have never thought of Idea as a useless person. How is this suddenly about me? If everybody is ready, then I'd like to invite tonight's male lead to take the stage! Ta-da! How is me changing outfits supposed to make the director's day? It's just a prototype costume. Is he that easy to please? Don't be silly. If I know our director, nothing will make him happier than to see his ideas brought to life by the right actor. <laughs> well, then I'm happy to oblige. Who am I to argue with the star of the show? Zosimos drew up countless designs and made a few prototypes before landing on this one. It just needed some tailoring to fit properly, so I made a few stitches here and there. I hope the result isn't a disappointment. Oh, it's perfect. Idea, I... I'm... Oh, <laughs> I'm so touched. Thank you all. You've made me happier than I ever thought I could be. How are you doing? Recovered? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you again, Idia. Oh, please, don't mention it. Well, now that we have the final component, it's time to say goodbye for now. Let's head to the core of the Valorium Mirage and get this place fixed up. Can I keep wearing my costume? Please do, by all means. Both of you can keep your costumes. It seems only fair. Yay! Kaya, keep wearing yours too. It looks amazing. <laughs> I agree with our mage. I'm sure it's not every day you get to play such an unforgettable character. Sure. I think I can be a bandit for a little longer. Bye-bye, Mr. Director. Take care, my dear friends. Vermin!